sin que en pijama nomás. Ah, pues es otro sí, ah, sí. Sí. Se cayó, se cayó. Ahora sí ya mejor vete, mamá, que te vas a resfriar ahí con cuidado con el agua. Te tienes que pisar bien hacia allá. Uy. Ketchikan is the southeasternmost city in Alaska, with a population of close to 10,000. Within the city limits, it is the sixth most populous city in the state. Ketchikan is named after Ketchikan Creek, which flows through the town. In view the first Lutheran Church, listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Ketchikan's economy is based upon government services, tourism, and commercial fishing, and the city is known as the Salmon Capital of the World. It is also known as the Rain Capital of Alaska and Alaska's first city. The Misty Fjords National Monument is one of the area's major attractions. The world's largest collection of standing totem poles can be found throughout the city and at four major locations. One of them is the Totem Bite State Park, which we are about to visit. Most of the totems are replicas of older poles. Rosita standing next to the Eagle Grave Marker. The mystical Thunderbird, thought to be the most powerful of all the spirits. Set amidst the peaceful forest, the park is home to 14 totem poles, each telling their own story 
and a replica of a 19th century clan house, offering a look into the Tlingit and Haida Indian cultures. A man wearing a bear hat. The hat was worn at special occasions during which stories were told or dramatized. This clan house represents an early 19th century chieftain's dwelling. The low oval entrance is typical of the large timber houses, while the facade with stylized raven decorated only a few buildings. The columns against the front corner posts are carvings of a man wearing a spruce hat with a crest design, sitting with a cane in his hand. The interior, one large room, has a square fire pit and platform against the walls. The carved house posts supporting the beams inside symbolize the exploits of Doug Tool. He is a man of raving freighty wearing a whistle skin hat who showed his strength by tearing a sea lion in two. On the roof, a clear story window for ventilation. Wandering Raven House Entrance Pole. The low oval entrance through the pole was typical of ancient times and a good means of protection during times of war. The top figure is Raven, recognized by his straight black beak. Below, the mink and a frog is the standing figure of a man, representing the story of how he brought life to the black fish, or killer whale, by carving them. Then comes Raven at the head of mass, the powerful chief who owned the sun, moon, and stars. Below the chief is Raven's mother. These figures illustrate the story of a Raven creating daylight in a darkened world. Both groups consider the Raven as a symbol of the Creator. Other prominent animals symbolized include the eagle, wolf, salmon, shark, killer whale, beaver and frog. Raven at the head of the Nas pole. A chief in a spruce root dance hat tops the pole. At the base is the chief, Raven at the head of Nas. The blackfish pole tells the story of the origin of the blackfish. Land Otter Pole. The hero of the story stands on top wearing a dog skin headdress. Monster Pole, a village watchman stands guard at the top. Cat 
Bear Wife. Cat hunted grizzly bears for a living. After his death, his wife retreated into the hill country with songs of sorrow. Raven with his breast forming and the headdress of his wife, Fog Woman, wearing the labrette in her lower lip. In her hand she holds two salmon, which she produced the first in the world. The two large faces at the base represent the two slaves of Raven. The Halibut Pole honors the Halibut House people of the Nexadi clan. Then it was time to go back to downtown Ketchikan for the Great Alaskan Lumberjack Show. Mahoney is one of Ketchikan's street of stairs. Man cleaning the $90,000 totem pole he gave to his wife as a wedding anniversary present. Now this is one of five stoplights we have here on the island, folks. This was the very first one installed many years ago. Now when they turn that light on, it was such a big deal for us, folks. It caused so much excitement that within the first 15 minutes, there was actually a car accident right there. Now that car accident just happened to be between the Alaska State Troopers and the Ketchikan Police Force. Yes, that is a true story, and I always wonder who got the ticket in that accident. This celebration of a bygone era is a rip-roaring good time. World champion athletes compete in springboard chopping, back sewing, axe throwing, log rolling, and the thrilling 50-foot tree climb. No videotaping was allowed, so I had to do what I had to do. Let's enjoy the show. The inspiration for creating the show was really um, for a family fun event which shows off the athleticism of uh, real pros or Iron Jacks, not just Lumberjack. An Iron Jack is a fellow or lady who competes in all 12 events and does it 95% better than anyone else in the world. The Great Alaskan Lumberjack Show is a, is a great place to come and check out uh, the sport for the first time. We do three choppings, we have the speed climbing and the log rolling. It's the easiest thing to learn, the hardest thing to master. Audience participation is a great deal of what this show is about. I mean, the booing, the jeering, the cheating that goes on, and with all the events, I mean, it's just a great time for all. I have the greatest job in the world. You can't stress how much fun it is for us out here. You know, having people clap and cheer for you at work, I and mean, you can't beat that, can you? Of course, come on. Come here, young lady. Oh, wait, you proposed. Of course. This historic boardwalk was a red light district during the gold rush. Now it's a quaint place to tour Dolly's House Museum view totem poles, and shop at locally owned stores and galleries. Number 24 Creek Street, Ketchikan, was the residence of Dolly Arthur. Dolly worked on Creek Street where fishermen, miners, and some more genteel characters found entertainment and feminine companionship.
the spawning season was about to end, but we still had the opportunity to see the salmon travel up the creek to lay their eggs. Following our sights, we enjoyed on the walk back to the island princess. A chance encounter with Laura and Deacon Paul from our parish. The Rock by Dave Rubin. Thank you for coming here. Welcome. A Tlingit woman sits with her drum singing her song of Ketchikan. She tells the story you see before you on the rock. She sings of how the loggers came and harvested the trees. The miners mined the gold, the fishermen dared the sea for the salmon and the halibut, and the pilots braved the sky, carrying people out beyond the reach of any ship or road. The pioneer woman arrives on her own, looking out over the horizon for opportunity that awaits her here in this new land. Atop the rock stands Chief Johnson, who in the early days of Ketchikan would be waiting on the dock to greet travelers arriving on the ship sailing from San Francisco and Seattle. He offered them trinkets for sale and in this way began a cultural exchange that continues today. He stands as a visionary as he now welcomes the world. Ketchikan was founded by the vision and heroic efforts of these pioneers. Welcome to Alaska's first city. Welcome to Ketchikan. This highly visible piece is becoming one of the area's most recognizable landmarks. Once the security officer confirmed all on board at 1405, the order was given to land the remaining gangway and commence singling up mooring lines. All lines were cast off and clear of the water by 1412, and Island Princess departed berth number four 
and moved ahead into the Tongas Narrows. Yeah, 